Steam Book Steam by Market Do Dark First the colors, then the humans. That's usually how I see things. Or at least how I try. Here is a small fact. You are going to die. I am in all truthfulness attempting to be cheerful about this whole topic. Though most people find themselves hindered in believing me, no matter my protestations, please trust me. Reaction to the aforementioned fact Does this worry you? I urge you, don't be afraid of nothing if not fair. Of course, an introduction, a beginning, where are my manners? I am not violent, I am not malicious, I am a result. I couldn't introduce myself properly, but it's not really necessary. You will know me well enough and soon enough, depending on the diverse range of variables. It suffices to say that at some point in time, I will be standing over you as she only as possible. Your soul will be in my arms, a color will be perched on my shoulder. I will carry you gently away. At that moment, you will be lying there, a really fine people standing up. You will be caked in your own body. There might be a discovery, a scream will dribble down the air. The only sound I will hear is my breathing, of the smell, and my footsteps. As with many of the others, when I began my journey away, I made the quick shadow and final moment of eclipse. The recognition of another soul gone. You see, to me, for just a moment, despite all the colors that touch and grapple with, uh, with what I see in this world, I will often catch an eclipse when a human dies. I'm seeing millions of them. I'm seeing more eclipse than I care to remember. The question here, what color will everything be at that moment? When I come for you, what will the sky be day? Personally, I like a chocolate colored sky. Dark, dark chocolate. People said the thing to me. I do, however, try to enjoy every color I see, the whole spectrum. A billion or so flavors, none of them quite the same, and a sky to slowly stuck on. It takes the edge off the stretch. It helps me relax. A small theory, people observe the colors only at its beginnings and it ends. But to me, it's quite clear that a day merges through a multitude of shades and tonation. With each passing moment, an hour can consist of thousands of colors. Rusty yellows, cloud spat blues, murky darkness. In my line of work, I make it a point to notice, you know, I've been a lady too, my one baby grade is distraction. It keeps me sane, it helps me cope, considering the length of time I've been performing this job. These trouble is 
who could ever replace me? The answer is, of course, nobody, which has prompted me to make a conscious, deliberate decision to make this traction my vacation. Needless to say, I vacation in agreement, in courage. Still, it's possible that you might be asking, why does he need a vacation? What does he need distraction from? Which brings me to my next point. It's the leftover humans. The survivors. They're the ones I can't stand to look at, although on many occasions I still fail. I deliberately seek out the courage to keep my mind off them, but now and then, I mean it's ones who are left behind, crumbly among the jigsaw puzzle, a realization, despair, and surprise. They have punctured hearts, they have beaten monks. Which in turn brings me to the subject I am telling you about tonight or today or whatever the hour and color. It's the story of one of those perpetual survivors, an expert at being left behind.